Artificial intelligence is believed by several people to be one, if not the, biggest threat to humanity. Whether you subscribe to this belief or not, it's hard to not see how big of an impact AI will have in our lives. Elon Musk is one of the people providing caution to the rise of AI. I ask you, what is the most important project or the most important topic for you to deal with in the foreseeable future? And you said that is truly the role that AI is going to play in our society. Could you explain yeah. why and why that is a big opportunity, but also seems to worry you? Uh, yeah, I think, well, I mean, humans have been the smartest creature on Earth for a long time, and that is going to change with the what's typically called artificial general intelligence. Uh, so this is, say, an AI that is uh, smarter than a human in every way. Could, could even simulate a human. Uh, so, you know, th th this is something we should be concerned about. I think there should be uh, government oversight of uh, AI developments, um, especially super advanced AI. It's just, this is anything that is a potential uh, danger to the public. We generally agree that this should have uh, government oversight to ensure that the the public safety is taken care of. Because um, you feel that one day uh, the uh, uh, mankind could serve the machines and not the other way around. Honestly, when I see people on their phones, uh, I think we're already serving the machine. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's like everyone's uh, answering the questions. You know, every time you do a search or add information, you're sort of building this. The, the, the digital group mind. Um, but yeah, uh, it, the advent of artificial general intelligence is called the singularity for a reason because just like a black hole, which is a singular, singularity, it's difficult to predict what will happen. Um, so it's not as though the advent of AGI is necessarily bad, but it's bad is one of the possible outcomes. And when is singularity in the in the definition of uh, Ray Kurzweil going to happen? Um, well, I think you were saying he, he is predicting 2025. I think that's uh, reasonably accurate. Mm. And how can it be avoided that is then uh, more a threat for humanity than an opportunity? Is it a question of governance, so that there is not too much power yeah. in one or in few hands? Or how would, you, yeah. how would you make sure that it goes into the right direction? I think we should have uh, a, a government oversight, just like we do. We have uh, government oversight and regulation of uh, cars and aircraft and uh, food and pharmaceuticals, these are all, uh, you know, there's a, there are regulators that oversee uh, these developments to ensure public safety. Um, and I think uh, yeah, auto, uh, digital superintelligence would also be potentially a public safety risk. And so it should be, it's, I think it's very important to, for uh, regulators to keep an eye on that. Who I should own the data, data by then? I think everyone should own their own data. Like individuals should own their data, um, and they certainly shouldn't be tricked by some terms and conditions of a website. And suddenly, you don't own your data. That's crazy. Um, who reads those terms and conditions anyway? So, uh, but it, I think it's just a, you, you know, like we wouldn't let people develop uh, a nuclear bomb in the backyard just for the hell of it. You know, that, that seems crazy. So. Digital superintelligence, I think, has the potential to be more dangerous than a nuclear bomb. So, uh, we should uh, just, somebody should be keeping an eye. So we, we can't have the inmates running the asylum here. Which is a global uh, issue, because if we do well, but uh, China has other rules and uh, a different regulatory framework, uh, that is another uh, yeah, I don't, I don't challenge. Think, yeah, I don't think, yeah, generally, like, that, this is one of the rebuttals I get from those developing AI, and Tesla is also developing a form of AI with self-driving, but it's a very narrow form of AI, it's just like, um, it, like the car's not going to wake up someday one day and take over the world, um, so, so it's, uh, but, but the, the rebuttal I get is like, well, you know, China's going to have unfettered uh, AI development, and so if, if we have regulations and that slows us down, then China will have it. And I'm like, look, I, from 
my conversations with uh, government officials in China, they are they they they're quite concerned about AI as well, and they uh, in fact they're probably more likely to have a good oversight than I think other countries. Elon has mentioned the term singularity in this interview. This is further expounded upon by tech investor Naval Ravikant, where he also argues that this phenomenon is still far off into the future. People who are talking about AI automating programming have never really written serious code. Coding is thinking. It's automatic structured thinking. An AI that can program as well or better than humans is an AI that just took over the world. That's end game. Mm. That's the end of the human species. Uh, and I can give you arguments why I don't think that's coming either. Um, people who are thinking, and I know I take the opposite side from some very famous people in this debate, but we're nowhere near close to general AI. Not in our lifetimes. You don't have to worry about it. Even in our lifetimes, really. It's so overblown. Uh, it's it's another. It's a combination of Cassandra complex. You know, it's fun to talk about the end of the world. Mm -hmm. um, combined with a god complex like people who have lost religion so they're looking for meaning in some kind of end of history right, right. Um, the reason why i don't think ai is coming anytime soon is because a lot of the advances in so-called ai today are what we call narrow ai they're really pattern recognition machine learning to figure out like what is that object on the screen or how do you find this signal and all of that noise there is nothing approaching what we call creative thinking uh, to actually model general intelligence, you run into all kinds of problems. First, we don't know how the brain works at all. Number two, we've never even modeled a paramecium or an amoeba, let alone a human brain. Number three, there's this assumption that all of the uh, computation is going at the cellular level, at the neuron level, whereas nature is very parsimonious. It uses everything at its disposal. There's a lot of machinery inside the cell that is doing calculations that is intelligent, that isn't accounted for. And the best estimates are it would take 50 years of Moore's law before we can simulate what's going on inside a cell near perfectly, and probably 100 years before we can build a brain that can simulate inside the cells. So putting it at saying that I'm just going to model neuron as on or off and then use that to build a human brain is overly simplistic. Furthermore, I would posit there's no such thing as general intelligence. Every intelligence is contextual within the context of the environment that it's in. So you have to evolve an environment around it. So I think a lot of people who are peddling general AI, the burden of proof is on them. I haven't seen anything that would lead me to indicate we're approaching general AI. Instead, we're solving deterministic, closed set, finite problems using large amounts of data. But it's not sexy to talk about that. If you, you're talking about mirroring the actual abilities of cells, or are you talking about recreating the actual mechanism? Like what, what, what yeah. is going on inside cells and, and biological organisms. Yeah, we just don't know how intelligence works. Right. We, we don't know We literally have no idea. Is. So most of the AI approaches basically say we're going to try and model how the brain works. But mm -hmm. they model at the neuron level, which is saying this neuron's on, that neuron's off. Right. They're combining their signal. But I'm saying in, the neuron is a cell. Inside the cell, there's all this machinery going on that's operating the neuron that is also part of the intelligence apparatus. Like I said, nature is parsimonious. So we've got this three pound wetware object mm -hmm. that can hold all this data. Nature has been very efficient in evolving kind of how we get there. I, I just don't think computers are anywhere close to that. Like they can hold that amount of data with that complexity, with like the holographic structure of the brain where it can recall in many, many different ways. Mm -hmm. uh, and then I don't think you can evolve a creature to be intelligent outside of the boundaries of, of feedback in a real medium. Like if you evolved, if you raised a human being in a concrete cell with no input from the outside, they wouldn't have any feedback from the real world. They wouldn't right. evolve properly. So I think just dumping information into into a thing isn't enough. It has to have an environment to operate in, to get feedback from. It needs to have context. But isn't that biological? I mean, what if you if you have just the all the information that people have accumulated and the lessons that people have learned and you program that into the computer? Like if if we yeah. can take a computer that can beat someone at chess, the the real question was, well, can we make some sort of an artificial intelligence that could beat someone at Go, which is far more complex yeah. than chess? They figured out how to do that too, and that was a giant shock, right? The These are still man-made, very closed, bounded games. Mm -hmm. They're they're not they're not on the road to the unbounded game of life. They are completely artificial. 
But this didn't go. Didn't that give you like a little bit of a pause? A little bit. Go is not Go or League of Legends or Fortnite. They're not completely deterministic. Right. But they're still very artificial, very bounded games. Being good at Go doesn't mean that you can then suddenly figure out how to write great poetry. Right. The、uh, creativity, for sure, is something that's. The creativity is the last frontier. So I、mm. do believe that automation over a long enough period of time will replace every non-creative job. Mm. Or every non-creative work, but that's great news. That means that all of our basic needs are taken care of, and what remains for us is to be creative, which is really what every human wants. Yeah. When I mean, what are you doing right now? This、yeah. is a creative job. Sure.、Right. Yuval Noah Harari, author of the book *Sapiens*, also weighs in on this topic during a fireside chat at Stanford, where he raises several thoughts-provoking sentiments regarding AI. Let's focus on that. What it means to hack the brain? Like what? Right now, in some ways, my brain is hacked. Right? There's an allure of this device. It wants me to check it constantly. Like my brain has been a little bit hacked. Yours hasn't because you meditate two hours a day, but mine has, and probably <laughs> most of these people have. But what exactly is the future brain hacking going to be that it isn't today?、Um, much more of the same, but on a much larger scale. I mean. The point when, for example, more and more of your personal decisions in life are being outsourced to an algorithm that is just so much better than you. So you know, you, you, we have we have two distinct dystopias that kind of mesh together. You, we have the dystopia of surveillance capitalism, in which、um, there is no like Big Brother dictator. But more and more of your decisions are being made by an algorithm, and it's not just decisions about、uh, what to eat or what to shop, but decisions like where to work and where to study, and whom to date and whom to marry and whom to vote for. It's the same logic, and I would be curious to hear if you think that there is anything in humans which is, by definition, unhackable, that we can't reach a point. When the algorithm can make that decision better than me, so that's one line of dystopia, which is a bit more familiar in this part of the world. And then you have the full-fledged dystopia of a totalitarian regime based on a total surveillance system, something like the totalitarian regimes that we have seen in the 20th century, but augmented. With biometric sensors and the ability to basically track each and every individual 24 hours a day,、um, and you know, which in the days of I don't know Stalin or Hitler was absolutely impossible because they didn't have the technology, but maybe might be possible in 20 years, 30 years. So it, we can choose which dystopia to to, to discuss, but they, they are very close. Let's, let's...